Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's Board of Appeals hearing. Before we begin, let me introduce the members of town government that act as advisors to this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, counsel to the board. To his left is Blaise Donatio, a planner in the planning department. And to his left is Joe Arico, a building permit coordinator. Now let me tell you why you're here tonight. <clears throat> New York State statute requires that any town that adopts zoning must also have a board of appeals to act as a relief valve so those persons aggrieved by strict application of the zoning ordinance can seek relief <coughs> uh, without going to court. Town board can give board of appeals additional powers, so special exception approval, site plan approval. In Smithtown, the town board has given this board authority regarding certificate of existing use and some special exception uses. The most com common kind <coughs> of applications before the board are area variances. Area variances deal with dimensions such as lot area, frontage, height, setbacks, and parking spaces. New York State statute mandates that the board must consider the following five criteria in area variances. When you come to the podium to present your application, you need to address these five areas. They're posted here for you. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created. Number two, whether the applicant has other feasible alternatives. Number three, whether the variance is substantial. Number four, whether the adverse impact on the environment will be created. And five, whether the alleged difficulty is self-created. The statute requires the board to balance the interests of the applicant and those of the neighborhood or community. This statute further requires that the board shall grant the minimum, minimum variance it's necessary and adequate, and at the same time preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood and the health, safety, and welfare of the community. The board has the power to impose reasonable conditions for granting variances. Special exception applications are different than area variance. When we have a special exception application before us, I'll explain the criteria for each. Regarding procedure, cases will be called in order that they are advertised. When your case is called, please come forward, submit your affidavits and mailing receipts to Mr. Donatio, and then you'll be sworn in at the podium. You'll be given the opportunity to explain to the board why you need the variance. If the applicant is done speaking, all interested parties will be given one opportunity and only one opportunity to be heard. So please, organize your thoughts, keep your remarks factual that are related to the case. Then I will ask the applicant to come back to the podium to answer your concerns. The board will then close the case and reserve decision. After all the hearings are closed, the board will review the cases and decide some of them. Others will be reviewed at a later date. There are three ways to find out the results of the case. Number one, you can wait until after the public hearing, but there's no guarantee the board will act on your case tonight. Number two, you can call the planning department tomorrow afternoon. And three, <clears throat> the applicant can wait and be notified by mail. After a hearing is closed, no additional information or testimony can be submitted by the applicant or any interested parties. We do have one adjournment. <coughs> Case 17022, West Development Partners, LLC, has been adjourned to December 8, 2015. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first case on the agenda, number 17304, LPC Family, LLC. The location of the property, 57 Fulton Boulevard, Comac. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum lot area from 21,780 square feet to 20,000 square feet for a 2,646 square foot single story dwelling. Where are all your affidavits? Um, these are the, the your affidavit of have a David of posting. All the
think he needs to. No, you need affidavits. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> All right. I have to adjourn this case. Yes, you have to, what do you call it? You don't have to send out your letters, but you have to repost. And you need those affidavits. And how many? And all the green cards. So if, if I only get a certain amount back, I have to make sure I have to get all of them back? The, the responses that they received the letter? Well, how many did you send out? Um, we sent out quite a bit. Right, use the mic, please. Well, you need to have almost all of them. I mean, maybe if one's missing, I can understand that, but. There's the 13 here. Well, you should have at least 13 responses. Okay. Um, I'll adjourn it. Okay. Till April 28th. Does that give you enough time to get everything? Uh, yeah, that should be, that should be enough. Okay.
apologize. Okay. I right, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Madam Chair, the next case, number 17305, William Google, 25 Twin Oaks Drive, Kings Park, the location of the property, the east side of Twin Oaks Drive, 1,065 feet south of St. John Lynn Road. The property is zoned R15. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 60 to 54 feet for an existing 234 square foot sunroom. Lift that mic as much as you can, or you can take it out, whatever. May I have your name, please? William Google. And your address? 25 Twin Oaks Drive, Kings Park, New York. All right. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Make sure you use the mic as much okay. as you can, please. I'm you requesting a <laughs> rear setback change from 60 to 54 feet for an existing 234 square foot sunroom. Sunroom replaced a 14 by 34 foot raised concrete patio that was original to the house. I don't feel the room impacts any of my neighbors or the neighborhood as it's hardly visible from the street or the side yards because of the height of the bushes. And it doesn't have any environmental impact because it's smaller than the original patio. And I thought the size was okay to build because it was one foot shallower than the original patio. And that's why I am here for the variance. Okay. Planning? No comments. Gentlemen. No questions. No Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Very moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The next case is number 17306, Patricia Witt, 4 Old Pine Lane, Comac, the location of the property, the west side of Old Pond Lane, 98 feet north of Florida Avenue. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 50 to 46 feet for a proposed 286 square foot roof over patio. You have your name, please? <clears throat> it's uh, Ricardo Cervini, C E R V I N I. And um, the address is 229 Smithtown Boulevard in Wisconsin, New York, 11767. Do you have a power of attorney? Okay. All right, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> basically, I mean, this is a simple project. The, um, the owners are proposing it's a covered porch, uh, roofed over porch in the rear. Um, they're requesting a rear yard variance from 50 feet to 46 feet. And as you can see, the property is a regular shape, so which is causing the, uh, the variance. Um, I mean, it's a minor little, uh, if you look at the site plan, it's only that particular corner, the southwest corner, which is very minimal. And um, I mean, does the board have any questions? Planning? No comments. Gentlemen? No questions. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thanks. <clears throat> Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is it barely moved and second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Madam Chair, the next case, number 17307, Brian Zarr, 197 Lou Avenue, Kings Park, the location of the property, the north side of Lou Avenue, 125 feet west of Avenue A. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the front yard setback from 40 to 18 feet, 25 feet existing, 
for a proposed 252 square foot garage addition, proposed 180 square foot porch addition, and a 1,163 square foot second floor addition, and to increase the FAR from 25 to 29 percent. My yes. wife. May I have your name, please? Uh, Brian Zabar. And your address, Brian? Uh, 384 Hunter Avenue, West Islip, New York. Okay, raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Um, my wife and I b bought this house, uh, 197 Lou Avenue, um, and we want to, uh, it's a very small house. Um, pretty good sized property. Um, we want to uh, add a garage to it, a front porch, and put a second story addition over the top of that. Um, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a very small house. Uh, it's got one small bedroom and the other bedroom is, is uh, very small. Uh, like the size of a closet, um, so um, it's uh, been neglected um, for quite a long time. Uh, you know, it's in it's in bad shape. So we wanted to fix it up. Okay. You know what the square footage of the house will be? Um, the I I didn't bring my uh, paperwork here. Um, as far as that goes, um, the second story addition is 1,100 and, and change. Um, the first floor is around 800, I think. Okay. All right. Okay. Planning. Uh, no comments. Gentlemen, anything? No question. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> There'll thank be you. no decision tonight. Okay. All right. I, I, I need to wait for the environmental department to give me a secret. All right. So I'm hoping by the next meeting we will have that so we can make a decision. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Well, what, what should I do then? Do I Just need to wait. Be? Um, until the next meeting. The next meeting is um, April 14th, mm. and then you can call the planning department to see if we made a decision. Okay. All, All right? right? Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Come up, please. <clears throat> May I have your name, please? Uh, my name is Vincent Finnegan. Uh, Say your last name. F-I-N-N-E-G-A-N. -N -E your address? 179 Lou Avenue. Okay, raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, I had just have some concerns with the property. Uh, I believe that my property is adjacent to this property. It currently has um, uh, some retaining walls that have been uh, uh, eroded through the years, and the property is uh, eroding onto the adjacent properties. I wanted to know if there was a plan to um, reconstruct the retaining walls and how it would impact the uh, adjacent properties 
uh, and basically a timeline of when that would be done. Well, right now that is not in front of us, so that's not up to us. The only thing he's asking for is to put a garage addition and a uh, second floor. So as, the, as far as the retaining walls, that is not in our authority right now. Um, yeah. Something to say about the retaining walls? Okay. Mr. Rico? Madam Chair, we will have somebody come out and look at the retaining walls from the building department and make a determination if reconstruction is required. Okay. There was a notice given to the town a few years ago um, uh, regarding the previous owner, mm -hmm. um, and there hasn't been any improvement on the situation. Well, why don't you give me a call uh, tomorrow? My name is Joe Arrico, and we will pull up the file to see what happened on the previous complaint, to see what situation is on the retaining wall, and I could give you further information then. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You can come up. You have to use the mic. Um, I, I plan on uh, rebuilding the retaining walls. Um, I realize that they're deteriorated, and uh, I, I have every intention of, of rebuilding the retaining walls. I'm going to build a nice house, of course. I wouldn't. Uh, it's a it's a landscaping issue, um, but uh, of course I wouldn't build a two-story house and not address the re the retaining walls. I've I've seen the condition that they're in. They've they've eroded, and uh, I. I fully intent on rebuilding them. So. All right, you can get in touch with the uh, building department, and they'll tell you what you need to do to for those retaining walls. Okay. All yeah. right? Okay, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I already talked with the building department, and she, she told me, um, you know, but uh, I, I wanted to get the, the house, <laughs> um, you know, resolved. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is there any move to second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Madam Chair, the next case, number 1-17184, Wendy's Restaurants of New York, 352 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, the location of the property, the north Wait side minute, of- I, I think you missed a case. Oh. I think you missed a case. case. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, David. <laughs> uh, the next case is 17308, Timothy Fitzpatrick, 5 Field View, Field View Drive, Fort Salonga. The location of the property, the east side of Field View Drive, 172 feet south of Timber Lane. The property is zoned R43. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 60 to 54 feet and the minimum side yard setback from 24 to 18 feet for a proposed 604 square foot attached garage. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Lady and members of the board. My name is George Sedell, S is in Sam, U D D E L L. I'm the architect for Mr. Fitzpatrick. Uh, I need the applicant first. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. May I have your name? I'm Tim Fitzpatrick. I live at 5 Fieldview Drive, North Fort, New York, 11768. All right. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Now, do you want this gentleman to represent you? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let me have your name again and address. Surely. Uh, George Sedell, S as in Sam, U-D-D-E-L-L. -L. I'm the architect for this application. My address is 202-11 East Shore Road, Huntington, New York. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to address the board and uh, the, the uh, questions that they ask over here, whether the uh, project would be detrimental to the neighborhood. Uh, in my belief, it will not be. Uh, we are adding a two-car garage onto an existing dwelling. Uh, we have... Also here, uh, I'd like to submit as evidence a uh, statement signed by the adjoining property uh, owners, 
that are most directly affected by this application, and they are in favor of that. Shall I give that to the uh, board now at this mm -hmm. time? This particular project uh, is actually a second phase. We originally uh, uh, had designed an addition and renovation to the existing dwelling, what was it, about, about nine years ago. We are, uh, the house right now presently does not have a garage at all. It has what they call a little boat garage, something a little bit larger than a tool shed. Um, they're a young family, three uh, young girls, and like any homeowner, they want to add a uh, two-car garage uh, and a mudroom so that when the children come in that they, they have a place to hang their coats and also a garage that they can keep their cars into. The, um, when we first looked at the site, if we were to take the existing dwelling, which we did not move uh, or change the north side elevation of that building and add a two-car garage, it would be coming so close to the property line that we felt it might be impeding on the neighbor's property and, and, and views. So what we did is we created a, a, a 45 degree angle to the garage. And by creating that 45 degree angle, we reduced the side yard setbacks, uh, or grade, uh, uh, rather made the side yard setbacks larger uh, in that uh, it wouldn't be as imposing as if we were to take a garage and just put it right up alongside the house. Uh, there's also a, um, a fairly steep driveway that comes up to where the, the uh, garage would be at this point, and we're looking to create more of a traverse on the driveway going out along the distance of the front yard, which isn't as steep. So we took those two elements and put them together, and we created a, uh, an aesthetic look uh, to the front of the, uh, the, uh, the house. And I have some renderings here if you want me to present to the board members to give a little bit more of a graphic uh, illustration of what it might look like. No, I think we're fine. And, and gentlemen, do you want any more? Renderings? I don't need it. No, we're fine. Okay, thank you. So uh, in that, um, we are coming mm -hmm. for relief on, as the gentleman had said, a front yard setback of a little bit more than five feet and a side yard setback of a little bit more than five feet. Uh, a lot less than what if we were to add it in the length of the home. We thought this was a good solution overall, uh, both aesthetically to the house, also for the neighbor, which uh, appreciates what we're, what we're looking to do at this point. Okay. Planning? No comments. Gentlemen? No questions. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is it regularly moved and second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Now, without further ado, <laughs> case number 1 17184, Wendy's Restaurants of New York, 352 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, the location of the property, the north side of Motor Parkway, 329 feet east of Marcus Boulevard. The property is owned WSI. The applicant is requesting a special exception to modify a counter service restaurant. Variance of a special exception standard requiring adequate parking. Variance to eliminate the required truck loading space. Variance to increase the maximum number of ground signs from one to eight, six existing. Variance to increase the maximum square footage of two ground signs from 40 square feet to 52 square feet each. Variance to increase the maximum height of a wall sign from 15 feet to 20 feet. And a variance to reduce the minimum parking from 69 to 40 spaces. Good evening, Madam Chair, fellow board members. My name is David Altman. I'm for the attorney for the applicant. I'm with the law firm of Brown and Altman LLP. We are 538 Broad Hollow Road, Suite 301, Melville, New York, for the applicant. I'll note for the record also with me here this evening, Madam Chair, are Joseph Colucci from Bowler Engineering. They are the civil engineers for the project, as well as Paul Going. Uh, he's a traffic engineer from Atlantic Traffic. As you may recall, uh, testimony was offered by Bowler. Uh, at the prior hearing regarding site design and layout and by Mr. Going relative to a traffic and parking study which uh, his firm prepared in connection with the project. 
I'll note for the record uh, that before proceedings commenced this evening, <clears throat> I did submit to Mr. Donatio affidavits of posting affidavits of mailing, as well as certified uh, return and receipt green cards, and an updated traffic study, which I hope has been passed around to the board. Um, that being said, as the board may recall, the applicant appeared before this board on February 10th uh, and offered testimony uh, in connection with the project as a whole. We presented documentation and testimony in connection with the proposed project in order to modify a prior special permit grant allowing for the operation of a counter service restaurant at the property and for certain area variants for leaf. This board will also recall, following the presentation of Wendy's application, that we had a discussion on the record with respect to Wendy's request for a front yard setback variance, wherein at the time Wendy sought to reduce the required front yard setback of 50 feet to 43 feet in relation to the construction of front yard parking. Uh, that was going to include developing some of the land bag parking from the 2003 special permit grant on the site. Let me just say, everything that was on the record, you don't need to repeat. I understand. Okay, so only it's something that uh, you're re doing that is new to the application. Understood, Madam Chair. My okay. comments are relatively brief. Okay. It was based on that discussion with this board and thereafter the town planning department that Wendy's uh, modified the site plan, which is now in front of the board, and which results in essentially uh, a withdrawal or a mooting of the request for the front yard setback variance based upon the uh, change of zone on this property going back to 2002 and then the special permit grant from 2003 from this board. Um, we noted that, and we heard this board loud and clear, that it wanted to maintain the 50-foot front yard setback, which was a design criteria <clears throat> that followed the LI zoning, former LI zoning of the site. Towards that end, uh, we have modified the front yard parking and the proposed addition to the front of the building wherein uh, an amended site plan was submitted to the planning department on the 10th of last month. The proposed addition, uh, which was originally going to be 330 square feet, was reduced in size to 264 square feet. Uh, which would yield a total square footage to the restaurant of 3,409 square feet. In addition, the 50-foot front yard setback will be preserved as required, uh, albeit in connection with that site modification, uh, we noted on the record last time, and you'll see on the plan, uh, that the uh, site, which currently has 42 improved parking spaces, uh, the parking will be reduced by two spaces as a result of that modification. That being said, that was arrived at again after consultation with planning and discussion with this board. Madam Chair, if the board would like, I can go through the remaining variances, but I believe uh, planning has noted them and we vetted them rather thoroughly during the uh, February 10th hearing. Um, I believe the applicant has offered sufficient and compelling testimony before this board at the February 10th hearing regarding the aforementioned variance relief and that we answered the board's questions concerning the application. Moreover, with the revisions to the site plan and the elimination of the need for the front yard setback variance relief, Wendy's plan comports with the town board's 2002 zone change by maintaining the LI zoning district requirements for the front yard setback. Given the submissions to the board, tonight's testimony, as well as the testimony and submissions to the board on February 10th, I respectfully submit that Wendy's has met its obligations under sections 267B C3 of the town law for the variance relief sought in connection with the application, and that it has also demonstrated that the site plan as revised um, warranting modification of the 2003 special exception permit under section 322.82 C6 and 322.94 G of the town code should be granted by this board. If the board has any questions, I'm certainly uh, uh, amenable to answering them, or if there's any questions uh, for Mr. Colucci or Mr. Going, they're certainly here to do so as well. The only question I have is this wall sign is staying exactly the way it is, the height and everything. Am I correct? The wall sign is, no. It's going up higher? It was it's proposed at 20 Let feet, Madam Chair, and I believe that was shown on the elevation that was submitted. Me, can I see that? <clears throat>
Thank you. Thank you. Planning? Uh, Madam Chair, as um, Mr. Altman stated, there were revised plans submitted to the planning department that was prepared by Bowler Engineering. Uh, planning did review them and found that the, uh, the maintaining the front yard setback certainly was a benefit to that particular site and to the industrial park as a whole. Um, we also uh, reviewed the traffic impact study that was submitted at the last public hearing by Mr. Going, I believe, prepared that study. Um, and in reviewing it, in conjunction with the proposal to create the dual um, drive-through lanes, uh, we feel that there would probably be some softening to uh, the traffic that's spilling out onto Motor Parkway at this point, which uh, certainly is a benefit to that roadway, to the traffic and to the industrial park as a whole, uh, with the exception of the height of the sign at 20 feet. Um, Planning is, uh, it recommends that the board consider approval of the application as proposed, with the exception of the height of the sign. Okay. Madam Chair, I'll just note for the record, and I think I stated this on the uh, February 10th hearing, you, you have a fairly significant setback of the, rest, the restaurant itself from Motor Parkway. It's about 110 feet or so, I would think, in this particular instance. And we have history with the board of granting similar height variances for wall signs where you have fairly significant setback, I think this sort of comports with that. It's 110 feet from the road. Identification for customers is certainly helpful. It, it certainly enhances that, particularly on a, a roadway such as Motor Parkway. Okay, thank you. Thank Gentlemen? You uh, yeah, sure. go ahead. Uh, the, the existing Wendy's, what's the height of the sign on the existing Wendy's? Yeah, one second. Approximately 16 feet. 16 feet. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? I have a question for Flynn. The, uh, that rectangular design element that is, which is part of the sign, it becomes a sign when they put Wendy's on it, correct? Correct. I believe at the last hearing for the Wendy's in Smithtown, mm -hmm. they referred to it as a blade. Right. But that right. blade is, is by right allowed if they did not have Wendy's on it because the, they, they're allowed to have up to 35 feet? It's an architectural feature with right. that, so without the, the signage on it. So they could do it, in your opinion, there would be no problem with it if they just didn't have Wendy's on it. They could have that blade. Right, or if they didn't have Wendy's at 20 feet right. and had it at a lower. Right, but it becomes a sign because it says Wendy's. Right. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Huh? Anything further? Nope, that's thank it. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Greatly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. You're very welcome. Okay. Madam Chair, the next case. Number 17301, Devin McGrath, 20 Huntington Avenue, Kings Park, the location of the property, the north side of Huntington Avenue, 300 feet west of Kings Highway. The property is owned R10S. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 35 to 33 feet for an existing 256 square foot deck. Good evening. How may I have your name, please? My name is Devin McGrath. And your address, Devin? 20 Huntington Avenue in Kings Park. Okay. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Would you like this gentleman to speak for you? Yes, this is architect Mark Wittenberg. He'll okay. be speaking for me. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Chair, could I just ask one question? Was there only one letter sent out for the... Uh... No, that's uh, one that came back uh, after last, uh, two I, weeks oh, from hearing. the last meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, may I have your name, please, and spell your last name? Mark Wittenberg, W I T T E N B E R G. Okay, and your address? Uh, an office at 655 Park Avenue, Huntington, New York. Okay, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Um, yeah, this is a 
fairly simple uh, variants, I believe. Um, uh, in this area, a lot of the houses are high ranches, and a lot, a lot of them have these second story decks. Um, I have some photographs of some other houses in the neighborhood. I believe uh, this, this deck blends in uh, with what's already there. The previous owner uh, in, in the 80s built this deck two feet bigger than it had to be. Devin is a new owner. Um, we're looking uh, for the board to grant this variance. Any questions? No, okay. Planning? No comments. Gentlemen. No. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Is really moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The next case, number 17302, Argiro La Rosa, 9 Deborah Drive, Wisconsin, the location of the property, the east side of Deborah Drive, 385 feet north of Bonnock Lane. The property is zoned R15. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 60 to 56 feet for a proposed 591 square foot first floor addition. I just need one of the applicants. Uh, yes. Okay. My May name is... My name is Argiro LaRosa. We're here for Nine Deborah Drive, and this is Frank Lombardo, okay. our architect. Before you even go in. Okay. okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. You want the gentleman to speak for you? Yes, please. Okay. So you, I'll, yes. Where's all the documentation? Okay. You can sit down. Hmm? May I have your name, please, and spell your last name? Yes, my name is Frank Lombardo, L-O-M-B-A-R-D-O. -O. Uh, I am an, the architect for the La Rosas. And your address? 137 South Road, West Hampton, New York, 11977. Okay, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. The, the La Rosas are here to request a variance for the minimum rear setback from 60 feet in an R15 zone to 56. Uh, I read your area variance considerations. I'll address them. I uh, want you to know the La Rosas are a young couple, as you can see. They purchased the house in, two, in September 2014. Uh, they're presently living with family, their parents in Sayville, and they have a, a young child. Uh, they were looking for a great neighborhood to live in, and of course, the Nisconset block of Deborah Drive uh, was perfect. And as a result, they bought number nine Deborah Drive. Uh, they hired a home a home inspector uh, to come in and look at the house prior to purchasing it, and everything went extremely well as far as the house is concerned. Uh, but the one thing that they obviously never addressed was a zoning study. Uh, that's not the job of a home inspector. Home inspector looks at structure. Uh, they looked at the house and they uh, realized that perhaps the rooms were a little bit too small. Perhaps the layout wasn't really the way they wanted it to be. So they wanted to do an expansion. The unfortunate thing is that there wasn't enough room to expand. Uh, there, were, there was only four feet available behind the house before we hit the 60 foot uh, rear yard line. And uh, we, looked, we looked at a number of options. I, I, got, I came on board in October after they purchased the house. Uh, we looked at a number of options with regarding uh, how we can address their needs with expanding some of the rooms in the rear, and nothing seemed to work out. So what we looked at was the least amount of encroachment into the rear yard. Uh, it was an eight-foot addition, which meant there was a, approximately a four-foot encroachment into the rear yard. Uh, that seemed to be the least amount that could work that would satisfy their goals. Uh, the addition 
that we're proposing is a straight line rear yard addition. Uh, the side yards are not impacted at all. Uh, it's just basically eight feet straight back, four feet into the rear yard. The height of the addition is not higher than what is there now. It's still a one story addition. There's no negative impact as far as the neighborhood is concerned. As far as the neighbors in the back is concerned, it's extremely compatible to what's there. Uh, we're gonna maintain the same type of architecture. We're basically going to have the roof slope back to the ridge line, so it's not gonna be any higher than the 15 foot one that is there already. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we also, uh, as, as far as the uh, benefit to the applicant, uh, it, would imp it would improve their life as far as giving them the opportunity to have family gatherings there, uh, raise a family, which is what they want to do, uh, and, uh, and, and enjoy the house that they bought. Uh, there, uh, there is no in negative environmental impact to the house because everything that we're doing is compatible with what is, with what is there. Uh, there's no increase. There's no increase in the number of rooms in the house, which is basically expanding the rooms that are in the back, which is essentially uh, the kitchen area, uh, a den, and a dining area. We just want to give them more room to have a better quality of life. Uh, is it a substantial addition? I, I I don't believe it is. It's it's only four foot into the rear yard. Uh, and as I said, there's no in adverse impact to the neighborhood. And uh, I, f I feel that it's probably the least amount that they can do to, to achieve what they want to achieve. We're also uh, adding a, it's not subject to the variance, but you know, we're thinking about the neighborhood as well. Uh, very, if you look at the front facade, very straight facade. There's really not much character except for the little brick that's in the front. We're adding a little portico in the front to give it a little bit of curb appeal as well. And I, I think that, that that's a, uh, an enhancement to the house, which would help the neighbors as well. No one, uh, to my knowledge, has uh, voiced any opposition to it. I think the neighbors are ecstatic from what the La Rosas tell me, but that's just their word. So we, we hope that the board is uh, in favor of this. Thank you so much. Planning? No comments. Chairman? No questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there anyone here that would like to be heard on this application? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. It's regularly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. That concludes our hearings for tonight. Thank you so much.